What if I told you that this was made using artificial intelligence? Well, my 3D printer may have made the physical version of this object, but the latest in text-to-3D generative AI actually made the model. Applying deep learning and machine learning techniques to 3D modeling is a budding field in computer science right now. It's starting to show promising results for the automation of 3D asset creations, and even the possibility of video games that are fully rendered as neural networks. But how can generative models actually learn to take in text and create robust 3D models? So the first concept that really needs to be nailed down is how do you actually understand something in three dimensions? We as humans naturally infer what things look like from different angles based on our experiences of living in three dimensions. But teaching a computer to understand this is a little bit more complicated. Although thankfully we're not starting at zero with this because we already have image generation or image diffusion models that can decently understand a 2D representation. So naturally these models started being applied to novel view synthesis or trying to generate images of specific subjects from different viewpoints. This first started by training diffusion models to actually generate multiple variations of the same photo. They did this by replacing the text encoders with an image encoding of the same image. But multiple variations isn't quite multiple viewpoints. Thus, data sets of multiple viewpoints of objects were put together and applied back towards training diffusion models. And through this training, we were able to get multi-view diffusion, or the ability to take this data set and generalize towards unseen or new data to create multiple viewpoints based on what it learned here. The same concept has been applied to video diffusion models as well to take it one step further, leveraging the inherent temporal and spatial capabilities of video diffusion models to create even more robust 3D novel multi-views. But this isn't really a 3D representation. It's more of a series of 2D representations or photos. The next step up then is applying deep learning more directly to create a 3D graphical representation. Before we get into that, I want to address a question I'm asked a lot. How have I been able to learn all of the advanced machine learning and AI topics to make the videos that I do? And the best way to learn these topics is really to practice every day and make incremental improvements that add up over time, which is why I'm excited to be partnering with Brilliant for this video. Brilliant is where you can learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. With Brilliant, you can develop a powerful daily learning habit, helping you develop personal and professional skills with only a few minutes every day. Stop mindlessly scrolling and focus on learning practical, applicable skills with Brilliant's courses, like their new data science pathways that use real-world data to build analysis and data-driven decision-making skills. These are designed to be approachable from any stage in your learning journey. Whether you're already a seasoned data expert refining your skills or brand new, Brilliant's got you covered with a full suite of content covering data visualizations, algorithms, regression models, and more with real-world data from companies like Airbnb and Spotify. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash adamlusek or scan the QR code on screen. Or you can click on the link in the description. You also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. This is where NERFs, or neural radiance fields, come into play. They take us closer to our goal of a 3D model by creating a volumetric neural representation. Essentially, a neural network that will take in five dimensions, the first three of which are a point in space's x, y, z coordinates, and then the last two being the explicit viewing angles, which consists of the azimuth and the polar angle. Its output is then an RGB color and density. We're able to then apply computer graphics techniques like volume rendering and volume ray marching to render these where every point in 3D space has a density and a color. The final 3D rendered pixel color is the accumulated result of all the points along this ray. In the end, this gives us a neural network that can act as a 3D representation of an object and do real-time novel view synthesis. Optimizations to nerfs and different approaches have been done as well with Gaussian splats and triplanes for novel view synthesis, but the general idea of being able to render machine learned novel 3D views at a more granular level remains the same. But these approaches still rely on data sets that have multiple views of different objects or scenes. But we can tie this back together with multi-view diffusion by looking at something like 0123, where they show that you can use a trained diffusion model that can create these different viewpoints to then perform 3D reconstruction. 0123 uses a trained stable diffusion model conditioned on original image inputs and viewing angle information 
to sample random viewpoints from a given single image. They show that this is applicable to generated images too, and then they use the randomly sampled viewpoints that are created as example images to ground the optimization of a NERF on that object. So we can now go from text to NERF 3D representation. The wider issue here, however, is that NERF 3D representations, while consistent and good at what they do, are not really realistic formats for actually using 3D models in virtual or physical settings. Instead, we can use the fact that these are good density representations of an object or a scene, or can accurately estimate the boundaries of an object in 3D space and apply something like the marching cubes algorithm to convert it into a mesh representation. Meshes, more specifically, are almost a net or web of triangles that make up the surface of an object in computer graphics. It's been found that pretty much everything can be accurately and efficiently represented on computers through triangles, with quality really increasing as the number of triangles increases. The aforementioned marching cubes algorithm then is able to do this conversion by taking a density representation like our NERF or Gaussian splat and dividing the space into small cubes. You then march a cube through all of those spaces and sample the density at each of the cube's corners. Then, based on which corners are considered to be inside versus outside the surface by looking at the high versus low density measurements, the algorithm determines how that surface actually intersects with the cube. These intersection patterns then become the triangles, which form the final mesh surface. So putting the full pipeline together and building off of the findings of 0, 1, 2, 3, we can take a look back at SV3D, or Stable Video 3D, which combines multi-view synthesis with NERF optimization and mesh representation all in one. They show the ability to use their video model to create robust multi-view videos that are then used to guide the NERF representation, and then once again to guide the mesh generation. More specifically, they use a fun technique of rendering the current 3D representation as a 2D image, and then calculating the loss using score distillation sampling, which leverages the diffusion model's understanding of 2D images to better guide the 3D generation. And so this pipeline of text to image, then multi-view synthesis, then 3D reconstruction into a mesh conversion really remains the go-to process as of today for full text to 3D models. Refining the mesh process has been improving more recently with the release of things like Mesh Anything, a machine learning approach to creating artistic meshes with autoregressive transformers, and this is still being actively improved. There has been some research for trying to directly learn 3D representations, Models like Git3D are able to generate explicit textured 3D meshes, but the decomposition of the text to 3D pipeline into each of its individual components tends to get the best results as of late. Which is how we're now able to ask for something like a dragon-inspired chess piece, and within just a few seconds, get a full 3D design that we can actually use. So while I've provided an overview of the field of generative and machine learning based approaches to 3D here, there's so much more going on that's actively happening and actively being researched on. So you should definitely check out Dylan Ebert's Machine Learning for 3D course that I was inspired by on Hugging Face, as well as all of the video sources that I've referenced across this video. I'll also have further resources, readings, and papers in the description below. Remember to subscribe, and let me know what you're going to make in the comments below.